The Norcadian boarding pod slammed into the ancient human warship's hull. The screeching crash of metal on metal echoing through the void of space as the galactic coalition forces sought to capture the derelict relic of humanity's lost glory. But the USS Retribution would not go quietly into the night. Deep in the bowels of the Retribution, emergency lights flickered to life and cryopods hissed open as the ship's long dormant crew began to stir. On the bridge, Captain Christian Scorer pulled himself to his feet, his muscles atrophied from centuries in cryostasis. He staggered to the command console, his vision blurry, his mind racing to process the chaos erupting around his ship. Status report, Scorer barked, his voice hoarse from disuse. Sir, we've got multiple hostile boarding craft attached to our hull, the sensor officer replied, her fingers flying across her console. They're Norcadian, sir, and they're trying to hack into our systems. Scorer's blood ran cold, the Norcadians. The very aliens who had brought the once mighty Terran Alliance to its knees, the ones who had forced humanity to flee into the depths of space, seeking refuge among the stars, and now they had found the retribution. But Scorer would be damned if he let them take his ship without a fight. Activate the energy shields, he ordered, and prime the plasma cannons. If they want a fight, we'll give them one. As the Retribution's ancient weapon systems hummed to life, Scorer opened a comm channel to the Norcadian flagship. The face of Admiral Vortis, the leader of the Galactic Coalition, filled the viewscreen, his features twisted in a sneer of contempt. Human, Vortis spat, as if the very word left a foul taste in his mouth. Your kind is extinct, nothing more than a footnote in the annals of galactic history. Surrender your ship, and I may grant you a quick death. Scorer squared his shoulders, his jaw set with defiance. I am Captain Christian Scorer of the Terran Alliance, he declared, his voice ringing with authority, and I will not surrender my ship to the likes of you. Vortis's eyes narrowed, his face contorting with rage. The Terran Alliance is dead he snarled. The Galactic Coalition rules the stars now, and we will take what is ours, by force if necessary. Scorer cut the transmission, his heart pounding in his chest. He knew the odds were stacked against him. The retribution was an ancient relic, its weapons and shields untested after centuries of disuse. And the Norcadians had the might of the entire Galactic Coalition at their backs. But Scorer had something the Norcadians did not. He had the unbreakable will of a human, forged in the fires of adversity and tempered by the unforgiving depths of space, and he would fight to his last breath to protect his ship and his crew. For the USS Retribution was more than just a ship. It was a symbol of humanity's resilience, a testament to their indomitable spirit, and Scorer would not let that symbol fall into the hands of the enemy. As the Norcadian ships closed in, their weapons primed and ready. Scorer steeled himself for the battle to come. It would be a fight for the ages, a clash of wills between the last remnants of humanity and the might of the Galactic Coalition. And the stakes could not be higher, for if the retribution fell it would be the end of humanity's legacy, the final nail in the coffin of a once great civilization. But if they could hold the line, if they could beat back the Norcadian horde and reclaim their place among the stars, then humanity would rise again, stronger and more resilient than ever before, and the galaxy would tremble before the might of the Terran Alliance once more. Captain Scorer hunched over the command console, his brow furrowed in concentration, as he pored over the retribution system diagnostics. The ship was in rough shape after centuries of neglect, but she still had some fight left in her. As he scrolled through the data, a flashing icon caught his eye. Athena, what's this? he asked, tapping the screen. The ship's AI materialized beside him, her holographic form casting a soft blue glow over the bridge. Captain, that is an encrypted data packet from the Terran Alliance archives. It contains information on a network of hidden outposts and supply caches scattered throughout the galaxy. Scorer's eyes widened. The Alliance had a backup plan? Athena nodded. Affirmative. 
In the event of the Alliance's fall, these outposts were designed to provide support and resources for any surviving human ships or colonies. A glimmer of hope flared in Scora's chest. Can we access these outposts? Yes, Captain. I have the necessary coordinates and access codes. Scora straightened, a plan forming in his mind. All right, here's what we're going to do. We'll use these outposts to resupply and repair the retribution, while also gathering intel on the current state of the galaxy. We need to know what we're up against if we're going to have any chance of surviving this. He turned to his crew, his voice ringing with authority. I want engineering teams working around the clock to get our weapons and defenses back online, and I want our fighter squadrons prepped and ready to go. We're going to need them for some hit-and-run attacks against the Norcadian blockade. As the crew scrambled to carry out his orders, Scora turned his attention to the view screen, where the Norcadian ships loomed like hungry wolves circling their prey. On the bridge of the Norcadian flagship, Admiral Vortis slammed his fist against the arm of his chair, his face twisted in frustration. How is that human relic still operational? he snarled. It should have been nothing more than space dust by now. His tactical officer flinched. Sir, our scans indicate that the Retribution's shields and weapons systems are coming back online. It appears the humans are more resourceful than we anticipated. Vortis's eyes narrowed. I want a tight blockade maintained around that ship. Nothing gets in or out without my permission. And dispatch scout ships to search for any signs of human activity in the surrounding systems. I don't want any surprises. He turned to his communications officer. Send a message to the Galactic Coalition's ruling council. Inform them of the situation and request reinforcements. We cannot allow this human threat to spread. Has the Norcadian fleet tightened its grip around the retribution? Scorer and his crew worked feverishly to bring their ship back to fighting form. Engineers swarmed over the ancient systems, coaxing life back into long dormant circuits and power relays. In the hangar bay, fighter pilots ran pre-flight checks on their newly repaired craft, itching for the chance to strike back at their alien foes. But even as they prepared for battle, Athena's sensors detected a new threat. Captain, a Norcadian scout ship is approaching one of our hidden outposts, if they discover its location. Scora's jaw clenched. They'll cut off our lifeline before we even have a chance to use it. He turned to his crew, his eyes blazing with determination. We're out of time. We need to secure that outpost before the Norcadians can take it out. Prepare for immediate departure. The crew of the Retribution belted themselves into their stations. The ancient ship rumbled to life its engines flaring with new purpose as it surged forward, ready to meet the enemy head-on. Captain Scorer gripped the armrests of his command chair as the Retribution's fighter squadron screamed out of the hangar bay. The sleek, angular craft streaked towards the Norcadian scout ship, their weapons primed and ready. Scorer watched the tactical display with bated breath, his heart pounding in his chest as his pilots engaged the enemy vessel. The Norcadian ship was no match for the advanced human fighters. Scora's squadron swarmed around the larger vessel like a pack of wolves, peppering its shields with plasma fire and targeting its critical systems with surgical precision. In a matter of minutes, the Norcadian ship was disabled, its engines crippled and its weapons offline. Prepare a boarding party, Scora ordered, rising from his chair. I want that ship secured and its crew in our custody. The Retribution's marines made short work of the Norcadian crew, subduing them with stun rounds and herding them into the brig. Scorer stood before the captured aliens, his eyes narrowed as he studied their fearful faces. Why were you scouting this region of space? he demanded, his voice cold and hard. The Norcadian captain, a thin, reedy creature with bulbous eyes, stammered out a response. We were ordered to search for human activity, he said, his voice quavering. The Galactic Coalition fears your kind, even after all these centuries. Scora's lips curled in a humorless smile. And what has the Coalition been doing in our absence, he asked. How have they been treating the species that once called the Terran Alliance friends? Rage boiled up inside Scora, and he slammed his fist against the wall. The Norcadians had not only destroyed the Terran Alliance, 
but had also subjugated and exploited its former allies, the injustice of it all made his blood run hot. We will not let this stand, he growled, his eyes blazing with determination. The Terran alliance may be gone, but humanity still lives, and we will fight to liberate our friends and allies from your tyranny. With the Norcadian ship captured, Scorer and his crew were able to use its codes and transponder to infiltrate the hidden human outpost undetected. They moved quickly, transferring much-needed supplies and spare parts to the retribution while Athena's drones worked to repair the damaged systems. As the Retribution's crew labored to restock and rearm their ship, Athena called Scorer to the outpost's command center. Captain, I've discovered a long-range communication array, she said, her holographic form gesturing to a large circular device. It appears to be designed to send encrypted messages across vast distances. Scorer's heart leaped in his chest. Can we use it to contact any other human survivors, he asked, barely daring to hope. Athena nodded. I believe so, Captain. I can encode a message that will only be decipherable by human technology. It may take some time to reach its intended recipients, but it's our best chance of finding allies in this new galaxy. Scorer stepped up to the communication array, his fingers flying over the console as he composed his message. This is Captain Christian Scorer of the Terran Alliance Vessel Retribution, he began, his voice steady and strong. To any human survivors hearing this message, know that you are not alone. The Terran Alliance lives on, and we will not rest until we have restored our rightful place in the galaxy. To the Galactic Coalition, know this. We are coming for our allies, and we will not stop until they are free from your oppression. The Terran Alliance is not dead, and we will rise again. With a final keystroke, Scorer sent the message winging its way across the stars a beacon of hope for any humans still out there. But even as the Retribution's crew celebrated their successful infiltration of the outpost, Admiral Vortis received word of the loss of his scout ship. The Norcadian commander slammed his fist against his console, his face contorted with rage. I want that human ship found and destroyed, he snarled, his eyes burning with hatred. Recall all our ships from their current assignments, we will converge on their location and crush them once and for all. As the Norcadian fleet began to gather, Skora and his crew prepared for the fight of their lives. They knew that the coming battle would be the ultimate test of their skill and courage, a desperate struggle against overwhelming odds. But they also knew that they carried the hopes and dreams of all humanity on their shoulders, and they would not let their species down. The Retribution's engines flared to life, as Skora took his place on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen as the Norcadian ships began to appear on the long-range sensors. The crew of the ancient supercarrier stood ready, their weapons primed, and their hearts filled with a fierce determination to defend their ship and their people, until the bitter end. The Norcadian ships swarmed around the retribution, a seething mass of alien metal bristling with weapons. On the bridge of the human supercarrier, Captain Scorer's eyes narrowed as he watched the tactical display. The enemy fleet was closing in fast, their intentions clear. Captain, the Norcadians are launching their attack, the censor officer called out, her voice taut with tension. Scorer's lips curled into a grim smile. Let them come, he growled. We have a surprise in store for them. He turned to the engineering station, where Chief Engineer Adara Patel was hunched over her console. Adara, is the phase shift drive ready? Patel looked up, her face streaked with grease and sweat. Yes, sir, she said, her voice filled with fierce pride. We've restored the drive to full functionality. Just give the word. Scorer nodded, his heart pounding with anticipation. Activate the phase shift on my mark, he ordered. Three, two, one, it mark. The retribution shuddered as the experimental drive engaged the ship's hull shimmering and distorting as it slipped out of normal space. For a heartbeat, the bridge was plunged into darkness, the only light coming from the glowing consoles and the distant stars beyond the viewports. Then, with a burst of light and a triumphant roar from the crew, the retribution reappeared behind the Norcadian fleet, catching the enemy ships completely off guard. The retribution's weapons erupted in a storm of plasma and missiles, tearing into the Norcadian ships with devastating precision, 
The alien vessels reeled under the onslaught, their shields flaring and their hulls buckling under the relentless barrage. But the Norcadians were far from defeated. Recovering from their initial shock, they wheeled around to face the retribution, their own weapons spitting fire and death. The space between the two fleets became a seething maelstrom of destruction, with both sides taking heavy damage as the battle raged on. Amidst the chaos, Scora saw a group of Norcadian ships break away from the main fleet, trying to flank the retribution and catch it in a deadly crossfire. Launch fighters, he snapped, his eyes never leaving the tactical display. Intercept those flanking ships and take them out. In the retribution's hangar bay, the human pilots raced to their fighters, their faces grim with determination. As they streaked out into the void, they were met by a swarm of Norcadian attack craft, and the space around the retribution erupted into a dizzying whirl of dogfights and desperate maneuvers. We're taking heavy losses, sir, the weapons officer reported, his face pale and sweat-soaked. We can't hold out much longer. Scora gritted his teeth, his mind racing. They needed a miracle a way to turn the tide of the battle before it was too late. Suddenly Athena's voice cut through the din of battle. Captain, I'm detecting an incoming transmission from a nearby system. It's a human signal. Skora's heart leaped in his chest. Put it through, he commanded, hardly daring to hope. The view screen flickered to life, and the face of a grizzled, battle-scarred human appeared. Captain Skora, this is Admiral Elena Vasquez of the New Terran Alliance the woman said, her voice filled with fierce pride. We received your message, and we stand ready to fight at your side. Scora's eyes widened in disbelief. Admiral Vasquez, I thought we were the last of our kind. Vasquez shook her head, a fierce grin spreading across her face. You're not alone, Captain. We've been rebuilding in secret, salvaging what we could of the old Alliance's technology, and now we're ready to take the fight to the Norcadians. Skora felt a surge of renewed hope and determination flood through him. Then let's show these alien bastards what humanity is made of, he growled. He turned to Patel, his eyes glinting with a wild, desperate plan. Adara, can you make another jump with the phase shift drive right into the heart of the Norcadian fleet? Patel hesitated for a moment, then nodded firmly. Yes, sir, but it'll be a rough ride. Skora grinned fiercely. Do it! The retribution shuddered and vanished once again, only to reappear seconds later in the midst of the Norcadian formation. The alien ships scattered in panic and confusion, their formation disintegrating as the human supercarrier unleashed a devastating barrage at point-blank range. The Norcadian ships reeled and spun, some of them colliding with each other in their desperate attempts to evade the retribution's fire. Explosions blossomed across the void as the human weapons found their marks, tearing through the alien hulls with brutal efficiency. On the bridge of the Norcadian flagship, Admiral Vortis slammed his fist against his console in rage and frustration. The human ship had outmaneuvered him at every turn, and now his fleet was in disarray, his ships being picked off one by one by the Retribution's relentless onslaught. Order a retreat, he snarled his voice filled with bitter rage. All ships withdraw immediately. As the Norcadian fleet limped away from the battlefield, their hulls battered and their pride shattered, the crew of the Retribution erupted in cheers and shouts of triumph. They had done the impossible, striking a blow against the mighty Galactic Coalition and proving that humanity was far from defeated. But even as they celebrated their hard-fought victory, Skora knew that this was only the beginning. The Norcadians would be back, and they would not underestimate the humans again. The war for humanity's future was far from over, and the crew of the Retribution would need every ounce of their skill, courage, and determination to prevail. The Retribution's engines flared as Captain Skora set a course for the coordinates provided by the human survivors. The ship tore through the void, its crew bustling with a newfound sense of purpose. They had struck a blow against the Norcadians, but the fight was far from over. As the retribution approached the asteroid field, Skora leaned forward in his command chair, his eyes narrowing. Athena, scan for any signs of human activity. 
The AI's holographic form shimmered to life beside him. Scanning now, Captain. A moment later, she spoke again. I've detected a hidden base carved into one of the larger asteroids. It appears to be shielded from long-range sensors. The retribution glided through the asteroid field, its shields flaring as it deflected the occasional chunk of space rock. As they approached the hidden base, a hail crackled over the comm system. Unidentified vessel, this is Grayson Reeves of the new Terran Resistance. State your identity and purpose. Scorer smiled. This is Captain Christian Scorer of the Terran Alliance vessel Retribution. We received your message and have come to offer our assistance. There was a moment of silence. Then Reeves's voice returned, filled with a mix of relief and excitement. Captain Scorer, you have no idea how good it is to hear your voice. We thought we were the last of our kind out here. Please, dock with our base. We have much to discuss. The retribution slid into the base's hangar bay, settling down with a gentle thud. Scorer and his senior officers disembarked, their boots ringing against the metal deck as they were greeted by Reeves and his team. Reeves was a tall, broad-shouldered man, with close-cropped grey hair and a face etched with the lines of a hard life. He clasped Scorer's hand firmly, his eyes shining with a fierce pride. Welcome to the new Terran resistance, Captain. We've been fighting the Norcadians for years, gathering intel and striking where we can. But with your help, we might finally have a chance to turn the tide. Scorer nodded grimly. We'll do whatever we can to help. But first, tell me about this weapon you mentioned in your message. Reeves's face darkened. It's worse than we feared, Captain. The Norcadians have been developing a planet killer, a device capable of destroying entire worlds. They call it the Doomsday Cannon. Scorer's blood ran cold. How close are they to completing it? Scorer's jaw tightened. He turned to his officers, his eyes blazing with resolve. We can't let that happen. We need a plan to strike at the heart of the Norcadian war machine and destroy this weapon before it can be deployed. So as Scorer and Reeves began to formulate their strategy, Admiral Vortis paced the bridge of his flagship, his face contorted with rage. The Galactic Coalition's ruling council had not been pleased with his failure to capture the retribution, and their criticism still rang in his ears. So you underestimated the humans, Admiral, they had said, their voices dripping with contempt. You allowed a single ship to humiliate the might of the Norcadian fleet. This cannot stand. Vortis slammed his fist against the bulkhead, his eyes burning with a fevered intensity. He would not let this insult go unanswered. He would hunt down the retribution and its crew, no matter the cost. He turned to his tactical officer, his voice a low growl. Mobilize the fleet. I want every ship, every soldier, every weapon at our disposal ready for battle. And prepare the dreadnought. We'll show these humans the true power of the Norcadian war machine. As the Norcadian fleet began to gather, Athena's sensors picked up a faint signal from the far reaches of space. Scorer and Reeves huddled around the console, their eyes widening as they read the decoded message. New terror, Scorer breathed, a hidden human colony thriving in secret for centuries. Reeves nodded, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. If we can secure an alliance with New Terra, it could be the key to defeating the Norcadians once and for all. Scorer turned to his second in command, a fierce determination etched on his face. Take a team and establish contact with New Terra. We need their support if we're going to have any chance of stopping the Doomsday Cannon. As the team prepared to depart, Scorer and Reeves turned their attention to the plan for attacking the Norcadian weapons facility. They pored over schematics and intelligence reports, looking for any weakness they could exploit. But even as they planned and plotted, they knew that time was running out. The Norcadian war machine was on the move, and the fate of humanity hung in the balance. The final confrontation was approaching, and the crew of the Retribution would need every ounce of their skill and courage to emerge victorious. Lieutenant Commander Mikhail Petrov's shuttle soared through the void, the sleek craft cutting through the inky blackness of space as it approached the hidden colony of New Terra. Petrov leaned forward in his seat, his eyes fixed on the view screen as the shuttle navigated the treacherous asteroid field that concealed the human settlement from prying Norcadian eyes.
As the shuttle emerged from the asteroid field, Petrov and his team were greeted by a sight that took their breath away. New Terra was a marvel of human ingenuity and resilience, a thriving metropolis carved into the heart of a massive asteroid. Towering spires of gleaming metal and glass reached towards the stars while a vast network of tunnels and chambers honeycombed the asteroid's interior. The shuttle docked with one of New Terra's many spaceports, and Petrov and his team disembarked, their boots ringing against the metal deck as they were greeted by a delegation of the colony's leaders. The New Terrans were a diverse group, with representatives from all walks of life. Scientists, engineers, soldiers and diplomats, all united in their determination to preserve the legacy of humanity. At first the New Terran leaders were cautious, their eyes narrowed with suspicion as they regarded Petrov and his team. But as Petrov spoke, his voice ringing with passion and conviction, the leaders began to listen more intently. We face a common enemy, Petrov said, his gaze sweeping over the assembled leaders. The Norcadians seek to erase all traces of humanity from the galaxy, to crush our spirit and eradicate our way of life. But together, we can stand against them. Together, we can reclaim our rightful place among the stars. As Petrov's words sank in, the new Terran leaders began to nod, their expressions shifting from caution to determination. They knew that the time for hiding was over, that the moment had come to take a stand against the Norcadian threat. We will join you, the new Terran Prime Minister said, her voice strong and clear. Our resources, our technology, our people, all are at your disposal in this fight against the Norcadians. Petrov clasped the Prime Minister's hand, his eyes shining with gratitude and resolve. Together we will be unstoppable, he said. As the alliance between the Retribution and New Terror was forged, Captain Scora and Grayson Reeves launched their attack on the Norcadian weapons facility. The Retribution shuddered as its phase-shift drive engaged, the massive ship vanishing from normal space and reappearing in the heart of the heavily guarded facility. Scora and Reeves led their respective teams in a fierce ground assault, their weapons blazing as they battled their way through the facility's labyrinthine corridors. Norcadian soldiers swarmed to meet them, their weapons spitting deadly energy bolts, but the human forces fought with a ferocity, born of desperation and righteous fury. Reeves and his strike team fought their way to the heart of the facility, where the planet-killing weapon was housed. They moved with practiced precision, their movements honed by years of training and experience. As they reached the weapons control room, they were met by a wall of Norcadian defenders, their weapons trained on the human intruders. But Reeves and his team were undeterred. With a roar of defiance they charged forward, their weapons blazing as they cut through the Norcadian ranks. The control room became a maelstrom of chaos and destruction, with energy bolts and shrapnel flying in all directions. In the end, Reeves and his team emerged victorious. The planet-killing weapon reduced to a smoldering ruin. But the victory was hard won, with many of Reeves' team members laying down their lives to ensure the mission's success. Meanwhile, Scorer and his crew fought to secure the facility's command center, their weapons flashing as they battled wave after wave of Norcadian reinforcements. The ground shook beneath their feet as explosions rocked the facility, and the air was thick with the acrid smell of burning metal and ozone. Suddenly a massive shadow fell over the facility, and Scorer's blood ran cold. He knew that shadow all too well. It was the Norcadian Dreadnought, Admiral Vortis's flagship. The Dreadnought opened fire, its weapons tearing through the facility's shields and walls like paper. Scora knew that they had only moments before the entire facility was reduced to rubble, burying them all alive. All units fall back to the retribution, Scora barked into his comm, his voice raw with urgency. We have to get out of here now. As the human forces fought their way back to the retribution, the massive ship shuddered under the onslaught of the dreadnought's weapons. The two vessels clashed in a titanic space battle, exchanging volleys of high-powered energy weapons and missiles that lit up the void like a thousand suns. The retribution shields flared and flickered under the dreadnought's assault, but the human ship fought back with everything it had. Its own weapons pounded against the dreadnought's hull, seeking out weak points and vulnerabilities. 
As the battle raged, Skora received word from Reeves. The planet-killing weapon was destroyed, the mission was a success. But the victory was bittersweet, as the toll on the human forces had been heavy. With the weapon destroyed and the facility in ruins, Skora knew that it was time to withdraw. The Retribution's phase-shift drive flared to life once more, and the ship vanished into the void, narrowly escaping destruction at the hands of Vortis's dreadnought. The human forces regrouped at New Terra, their hearts heavy with the weight of their losses. They had struck a powerful blow against the Norcadian war machine, but they knew that the fight was far from over. As they mourned their fallen comrades and tended to their wounds, Skora and his allies began to plan their next move. The Norcadians were weakened, but still formidable, and the humans knew that they would need every ounce of their strength and cunning to prevail. But they also knew that they were not alone. With the combined might of the Retribution, New Terror, and the indomitable human spirit, they would continue to fight, to resist, to rise against the darkness that threatened to engulf them all. The war for humanity's future was far from over, but the crew of the Retribution and their allies would never stop fighting, never stop hoping, never stop believing in the power of the human spirit to overcome any obstacle, no matter how great. In the aftermath of the daring strike on the Norcadian weapons facility, Captain Scorer and the crew of the Retribution savour their hard-fought victory, but their respite is short-lived. A distress call from a nearby system cuts through the quiet of the bridge, its urgency palpable. Captain, we're receiving a transmission from a Norcadian rebel faction, Athena reports, her holographic form shimmering beside Scorer. They're under attack by Admiral Vortis's forces and request immediate assistance. Scorer's eyes narrow as he reads the message, a plan already forming in his mind. The enemy of my enemy, he mutters, a grim smile tugging at his lips. Athena, set a course for the rebel system. Let's show Vortis that he's not the only one with friends in this galaxy. The retribution, flanked by a squadron of new Terran ships, leaps into action, its phase-shift drive tearing through the fabric of space-time. They emerge in the heart of the besieged system, the rebel ships locked in a desperate struggle against the overwhelming might of the Norcadian fleet. Skora wastes no time, his orders crisp and precise. Target their command ships, aim for their engines and weapon systems. We need to give those rebels a fighting chance. The Retribution's weapons roar to life, lancing out with searing beams of plasma and missiles that streak through the void. The new Terran ships follow suit, their advanced technology a match for the Norcadian vessels. Under Skora's tactical guidance, the tide of the battle shifts. The Norcadian ships falter, their formations crumbling under the relentless onslaught of the human forces. The rebel ships seize the opportunity, darting through the gaps in the enemy lines and unleashing their own volleys of fire. In the heart of the rebel flagship, Zaxxon, the leader of the Norcadian resistance, watches the battle unfold with a mix of awe and relief. He had heard stories of the legendary retribution and its indomitable human crew, but to see them in action was something else entirely. As the last Norcadian ship falls, Zaxxon hails the retribution, his voice filled with gratitude. Captain Skora, I am in your debt. Your intervention has saved countless lives and given us a chance to strike back against the tyranny of the Norcadian Council. Skora nods, his expression serious yet hopeful. We have a common enemy, Zaxxon, and a common goal to end the Norcadian's reign of terror and restore freedom to the galaxy. Let us work together, combine our strength and knowledge, and we will be unstoppable. Zaxxon's eyes glint with determination. My people have been fighting from the shadows for too long. We have information, contacts, and resources that could be of great value to your cause. In return, we ask only for your support and protection as we continue our work to undermine the Norcadian war machine from within. Skora extends his hand, a symbol of the alliance forged in the heat of battle. You have my word, Zaxxon. The Retribution and her crew will stand with you, now and always. As the rebel ships dock with the Retribution, a sense of hope and purpose fills the air. The human-led insurgency has gained a powerful new ally, 
and the Norcadian's grip on the galaxy suddenly seems far less certain. But even as Skora and Zaxxon begin to plan their next move, a storm is brewing on the horizon. Admiral Vortis, enraged by the Retribution's continued defiance and the growing unrest within his own ranks, begins to descend into paranoia and madness. On the bridge of his dreadnought, Vortis paces like a caged animal, his eyes wild with fury. Traitors, he snarls, his voice dripping with venom. They are everywhere, lurking in the shadows, plotting against me. He turns to his terrified subordinates, his gaze burning with an unholy light. I want every officer, every soldier, every technician vetted. Anyone with even a hint of disloyalty is to be executed on the spot. We will purge the rot from our ranks, no matter the cost. Thaz Vortis's reign of terror begins, the Norcadian military fractures, its unity and discipline crumbling under the weight of fear and suspicion. Skora and his allies watch from afar, their resolve hardening with each passing day. Across the galaxy, whispers of the Retribution's victories spread like wildfire. The species of the Galactic Coalition, long oppressed under Norcadian rule, begin to stir, their eyes turning towards the distant light of hope and freedom. Skora and his allies, sensing the shifting winds of change, prepare for their most daring campaign yet. They will strike at the heart of the Norcadian war machine, targeting its shipyards, its factories, its command centers. They will bleed the beast dry until it collapses under the weight of its own tyranny. The Retribution and her crew stand ready, united in purpose and tempered by the fires of war. They know that the road ahead will be long and bloody, that the price of victory will be steep, but they also know that they are the galaxy's last, best hope the only ones who can light the spark that will ignite the flames of revolution and burn the Norcadian Empire to ash. As the Retribution's coordinated strikes against Norcadian targets sowed chaos and discord throughout the Galactic Coalition, Captain Skora received an encrypted transmission from Zaxxon's rebel network. The message contained intelligence about a secret Norcadian research facility, hidden deep within a remote asteroid field, Skora's eyes narrowed as he read the report, his brow furrowing with each disturbing detail. The facility was rumoured to be developing a new breed of bioengineered super-soldier, designed to be completely loyal to the Norcadian ruling council and possess enhanced combat abilities far beyond those of ordinary troops. The captain slammed his fist on the table, the gravity of the situation weighing heavily on his shoulders. If the Norcadians succeeded in creating an army of these super-soldiers, it could tip the balance of the war back in their favor, undoing all the hard-fought gains the human-led resistance had made. Skora knew he had to act fast. He summoned his most trusted officers and allies to the Retribution's war room, the holographic display casting an eerie glow over their grim faces. We have to take out that research facility, Skora declared, his voice filled with steely resolve. If the Norcadians unleash those super-soldiers on the galaxy, we'll be right back where we started. Lieutenant Commander Petrov, Skora's second-in-command, stepped forward. I volunteer to lead the mission, sir. My team and I can infiltrate the facility and destroy it from the inside. Skora shook his head. No, Petrov, I need you here, leading the retribution in my absence. This mission requires the best of the best, and that includes me. The captain turned to the new Terran Special Forces commander, a grizzled veteran named Axel Rees. Commander Rees, I want your top operatives on this mission. We'll need their expertise to get past the facility's defenses. Over the next few hours, Skora and his team poured over the intelligence gathered by Zaxxon's rebels, formulating a plan to infiltrate the research facility. They would use stolen Norcadian shuttlecrafts and disguises to slip past the facility's security measures, then split into two teams to plant explosives in key locations throughout the complex. As the retribution dropped out of phase shift near the asteroid field, Skora and his team prepared to depart. Petrov clasped the captain's hand, his eyes filled with a mix of respect and concern. Good luck, sir, Petrov said, his voice tight with emotion. We'll be waiting for your signal to extract you once the job is done. Skora nodded a grim smile on his face. 
Just make sure you're there when we need you, Petrov. I don't plan on dying in some Norcadian hellhole today. With that, Skora and his team boarded the stolen Norcadian shuttles, their disguises in place and their weapons concealed. As they approached the research facility, the captain's heart raced with anticipation and dread, knowing that the fate of the galaxy could hinge on the success of their mission. The shuttles docked without incident, the Norcadian guards barely glancing at the disguised humans as they passed through the airlock. Scorer and his team moved quickly, splitting into two groups as planned and making their way towards the facility's main research labs. As they entered the cavernous chamber, Scorer's breath caught in his throat. Row upon row of stasis pods lined the walls, each one containing a genetically modified Norcadian soldier, their bodies grotesquely enhanced with cybernetic implants and pulsing with unnatural energy. My God, Reese whispered, his face pale with horror. What have they done? Scorer shook his head, his jaw clenched with anger. They've created monsters, Commander, and it's up to us to make sure these abominations never see the light of day. The team set to work, planting explosive charges at key structural points throughout the lab. But as they were preparing to move on to the next target, a group of Norcadian scientists and their genetically enhanced guards burst into the room, alerted by a silent alarm. Intruders! One of the scientists shouted, his voice shrill with panic. Stop them! The Norcadian super-soldiers surged forward, their movements unnaturally fast and fluid. Scorer and his team opened fire, their weapons spitting hot plasma as they tried to hold back the advancing horde. The battle was brutal and bloody, the humans using every ounce of their skill and training to outmatch the Norcadian abominations. Scorer fought like a man possessed, his rifle blazing as he cut down one super-soldier after another. But the Norcadians kept coming, their enhanced bodies shrugging off wounds that would have felled a normal soldier. Skora heard a cry of pain and turned to see Petrov fall, his chest pierced by a crackling energy blade. The captain's heart sank as he realized the severity of Petrov's wound. There was no way his second-in-command would survive without immediate medical attention, and there was no time to evacuate him before the charges detonated. Skora made a split-second decision, one that would haunt him for the rest of his days. With a heavy heart, he ordered his team to fall back, leaving Petrov behind as they fought their way out of the facility. The explosions ripped through the research labs, the stasis pods shattering, and the genetically enhanced soldiers burning in the inferno. Scorer and his team barely made it to the shuttles, the heat of the blast singeing their hair and clothes. As they sped away from the facility, Scorer slumped in his seat, his eyes haunted by the image of Petrov's fallen form. The loss of his friend and comrade weighed heavily on his soul, but he knew that Petrov's sacrifice had not been in vain. The destruction of the Norcadian super-soldier program was a critical blow to the enemy's war machine, one that would buy the human-led resistance valuable time to press their advantage. But even as Skora and his team returned to the retribution, the taste of victory was bittersweet, tainted by the knowledge of what they had lost. Admiral Vortis stood on the bridge of his dreadnought, his eyes blazing with a manic fury. The loss of the super-soldier program had shaken him to his core, and the relentless victories of the human resistance had driven him to the brink of madness. He would not let this insult stand. Mobilize the fleet, Vortis snarled, his voice dripping with venom. We will crush the humans and their allies once and for all, set course for new terror, and prepare for a full-scale assault. The Norcadian ships surged forward, a seething mass of metal and weaponry that darkened the void of space. At the heart of the Armada, Vortis's dreadnought loomed like a monstrous predator, its weapons primed and ready to unleash destruction upon the human stronghold. But even as the Norcadian fleet closed in on its target, a message crackled across the secure channels of the human resistance. Zaxxon, the rebel leader, had intercepted Vortis's battle plans, and now the information was in the hands of Captain Scorer and the Retribution. Scorer wasted no time. He gathered his allies, the New Terrans, the rebel Norcadians, and the other species that had joined the fight against the Galactic Coalition's tyranny. Together, they devised a counter-strategy, 
a daring plan to meet Vortis's fleet head-on and turn the tide of the war. The Retribution and its allied ships raced through the void, their engines burning with a fierce determination. They knew that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, that the outcome of this battle would determine the future of all free species. As the two fleets converged, the void of space erupted into a maelstrom of fire and destruction. The Norcadian ships opened fire, their weapons tearing through the void with searing beams of energy and missiles that left trails of superheated plasma in their wake. But the Retribution and its allies fought back, with a ferocity that matched their enemies' savagery. The human ship's phase-shift technology allowed it to blink in and out of existence, evading the worst of the Norcadian fire and striking back with devastating precision. The Allied ships swarmed the Norcadian fleet like angry hornets, their weapons finding weak points in the enemy's defences and exploiting them mercilessly. Explosions blossomed across the void as ships on both sides took damage, their hulls rupturing and spilling debris and bodies into the cold vacuum of space. Amidst the chaos of the battle, Scora made a daring decision. He ordered the Retribution to launch a direct assault on Vortis's dreadnought, aiming to take out the Norcadian leadership and throw their fleet into disarray. The Retribution surged forward, its weapons blazing as it closed in on the massive Norcadian ship. The dreadnought responded in kind, its own weapons tearing at the Retribution's shields and hull with relentless fury. The two ships clashed like titans, their hulls scraping against each other as they traded devastating blows. The Retribution's phase-shift drive strained under the immense stress of the battle, its systems pushed to the brink of failure. But Scora would not be denied. With a fierce battle cry he led a boarding party onto the Dreadnought, determined to confront Vortis face to face and end his reign of terror once and for all. The human soldiers fought their way through the Dreadnought's corridors, their weapons flashing as they cut down the Norcadian defenders with ruthless efficiency. The air was thick with the stench of blood and burning metal, and the screams of the dying echoed through the ship's halls. Finally, Skora and his team reached the bridge where Vortis awaited them. The Norcadian admiral's face was twisted with rage and hatred, his eyes burning with a madness that had consumed him utterly. I will die here, human, Vortis snarled, his voice dripping with venom. You and your pathetic allies will be crushed beneath the might of the Norcadian war machine. Skora said nothing. He simply raised his weapon, his eyes locked with vortices in a silent challenge. The two leaders charged at each other, their bodies slamming together in a brutal clash of flesh and metal. They fought with a savage intensity, trading blows that would have felled lesser beings. Vortis was a formidable opponent, his strength and speed enhanced by Norcadian technology, but Scora's human tenacity and unbreakable will kept him in the fight. The battle raged on, the two combatants locked in a deadly embrace as the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. The Retribution and the Dreadnought shuddered under the impact of weapons fire, and the voices of the damned and the dying rose in a hellish chorus around them. But in the end, there could be only one victor. Scora and Vortis circled each other, their bodies battered and bloody, their eyes locked in a final, fateful showdown. The future of humanity, of the Norcadian people, of the entire galactic coalition, would be decided in the next few moments. Scora lunged forward, his weapon raised for a killing blow. Vortis met him head-on, his own blade flashing in the dim light of the bridge. The two leaders clashed one final time, their weapons locked together as they strained against each other with all their remaining strength. And then, with a sickening crunch, one of them fell, their body crumpling to the deck in a heap of shattered bone and torn flesh. The survivor stood over their fallen foe, chest heaving with exertion, eyes blazing with the light of victory. The battle for the fate of the galaxy was over, but the war for the future of all species was just beginning. The Retribution and its allies had struck a crushing blow against the Norcadian war machine, but the road ahead was still long and fraught with peril. The surviving ships limped back to New Terror, their hulls battered and scarred from the intense fighting. The crews of the Allied fleet disembarked, their faces haggard and haunted by the horrors they had witnessed. 
they gathered in the great halls of the rebel base, their eyes fixed on the figure of Captain Scorer as he strode to the front of the room. My friends, Scorer began, his voice ringing with exhaustion and hard-won triumph, we have struck a mighty blow against the tyranny of the Norcadian war machine, but our fight is far from over. The Galactic Coalition still holds sway over countless worlds, and its leaders will not rest until they have crushed all resistance to their rule. The gathered rebels and allies murmured amongst themselves, their faces etched with grim determination. They knew that the path ahead would be long and bloody, that many more lives would be lost before the galaxy was truly free. But they also knew that they had something worth fighting for. They had hope, and they had each other. The bonds forged in the heat of battle would not be easily broken, and the memory of those who had fallen would forever drive them forward. Scorer's gaze swept over the assembled crowd, his eyes blazing with a fierce resolve. We will not rest until every species in the galaxy is free from the yoke of Norcadian oppression, he declared, his voice ringing with conviction. We will fight on, no matter the cost, until the dream of a united and peaceful galaxy is realized. The rebels and allies erupted into cheers and applause, their voices rising in a defiant roar that shook the very foundations of the base. They knew that the road ahead would be hard, that the sacrifices would be great. But they also knew that they were not alone, that they had the strength and courage of all free species behind them. And so, as the Retribution and its allies prepared for the long struggle ahead, they did so with a newfound sense of purpose and unity. They were no longer just humans, nor Cadians, or members of any one species. They were the defenders of the galaxy, the champions of freedom and justice, the warriors who would fight and die to ensure that no world would ever again suffer under the heel of tyranny. The battle for the fate of the galaxy had been won, but the war for its soul had only just begun. Scora and Vortis grappled with each other, their hands locked in a desperate struggle for dominance. The human captain's face was contorted with rage and determination, while the Norcadian admiral's eyes burned with a manic fury. They traded blows, each strike fueled by the hatred and resentment that had festered between their species for centuries. But Scora's indomitable human spirit proved too much for Vortis. With a final desperate surge of strength, the captain overpowered the admiral, driving him to his knees. Scorer's hands closed around Vortis's throat, squeezing the life from the tyrannical leader. As Vortis lay dying, his breath coming in ragged gasps, a cruel smile twisted his lips. You think you've won, human, he rasped, his voice barely audible over the blaring alarms and the distant sounds of battle. But you have no idea what you're up against. Scorer leaned in closer, his eyes narrowed. What are you talking about? Vortis let out a gurgling laugh, flecks of blood spattering his lips. The Norcadian ruling council. We were just puppets. The true masters are the Keltar, an ancient race that has been manipulating us all along. Scorer's eyes widened in shock, his grip on Vortis's throat loosening. What? Why? They wanted this war, human. They orchestrated everything, playing us against each other for their own purposes. Vortis coughed, his body shuddering. And now, with my death, they will have what they want. With his last ounce of strength, Vortis reached out and activated a hidden control panel on his wrist. A deep, ominous rumble echoed through the dreadnought, and the ship's systems began to flash with warning lights. A self-destruct mechanism, Vortis whispered a final act of spite. This ship and everyone on it will be consumed in the blast, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Skora's mind raced. The implications of Vortis's revelation and the impending destruction of the dreadnought hitting him like a hammer blow. He knew he had only moments to act. Activating his comlink, Skora barked orders to his boarding party. All units, evacuate immediately. Get back to the shuttles and warn the Retribution and our allies to clear the blast radius. Now. As his team acknowledged the command and began their desperate race to escape the doomed ship, Skora turned his attention to the self-destruct mechanism. He knew that if he could find a way to delay the sequence, even by a few minutes, it could mean the difference between life and death for countless souls. But as he studied the complex array of controls and readouts, 
a grim realization settled over him. There was no way to stop the self-destruct, not without sacrificing himself in the process. Skora closed his eyes, his heart heavy with the weight of the decision he knew he had to make. He thought of the retribution, of the brave men and women who had fought and died under his command. He thought of the alliance they had forged, the hope they had kindled in the hearts of the oppressed and the downtrodden. And he knew with a clarity that cut through the chaos and the fear that his life was a small price to pay to ensure that their sacrifices had not been in vain. With a final resolute breath, Skora opened his eyes and turned to face the self-destruct mechanism. He would stay behind, buying precious time for his crew and allies to escape, even as the dreadnought and everything on it was consumed in the cataclysmic blast. As the timer ticked down and the ship began to shudder and groan around him, Skora stood tall, his face set in a mask of grim determination. He thought of the Keltar, of the shadowy threat that loomed over the galaxy, and he knew that his sacrifice was just the beginning of a much larger struggle. But for now he would face his end with the same unwavering courage and indomitable spirit that had defined his life. For he was Captain Christian Skora, hero of the Terran Alliance and champion of the oppressed, and he would meet his fate on his own terms. The Retribution and its allies raced away from the Dreadnought, pushing their engines to the limit as they sought to outpace the impending blast. On the bridge of the Retribution, Mikhail Petrov, now the ship's acting captain, watched the Dreadnought grow smaller on the viewscreen, his heart heavy with the knowledge of the sacrifice his friend and mentor had made. As the Dreadnought exploded in a blinding flash of light, the shockwave ripped through the surrounding space, buffeting the fleeing ships and sending debris hurtling in all directions. The Norcadian fleet, caught in the blast, was devastated their ships torn apart and consumed by the roiling inferno. In the aftermath of the battle, a stunned silence settled over the bridge of the retribution. The crew, numb with grief and exhaustion, could scarcely believe that their long and bitter struggle had finally come to an end. But even as they mourned the loss of Captain Skora and the countless other lives claimed by the war, they knew that his sacrifice had not been in vain. The Norcadian threat had been vanquished, and the seeds of a new, more just galactic order had been planted. As the Retribution and its allies regrouped and began the long, arduous process of rebuilding, they carried with them the memory of Christian Skora and all those who had fallen in the fight for freedom and justice. They would honor their sacrifices by working tirelessly to forge a brighter future, one in which the mistakes of the past would never be repeated. But even as they celebrated their hard-won victory, a sense of unease lingered among the survivors. The revelation of the Keltar and their sinister machinations cast a pall over their triumph, hinting at the challenges and dangers that lay ahead. For the crew of the Retribution and their allies knew that their struggle was far from over. The Keltar, with their ancient power and enigmatic agenda, loomed on the horizon, a threat unlike any they had faced before and they knew that they would need all their strength, courage and unity to stand against the coming darkness. But for now they would cling to the hope and promise of their newfound peace, cherishing the bonds of friendship and camaraderie that had been forged in the crucible of war. They would face the future together, ready to meet whatever challenges lay ahead, in the name of those who had sacrificed everything to make their victory possible. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.